everybody and welcome back to another edition of Tea and Strumpets. Uh, on this episode, we are going to be uh, reviewing or recapping one of our favorite shows, Good Trouble. Uh, this is one half of your illustrious hosts. I am Forrest, aka Jungle915 on Twitter, and I have here with me today... Hey, it's Sean. You can reach me at Sean with a W on Twitter. Same as it ever was. So as I stated, we're going to be going through Good Trouble, which is a a spinoff of the ABC Family show. Well, it's not ABC Family. Was it Freeform now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Freeform show, uh, The Fosters. And uh, yeah, take it away. Okay, so season two premiere basically starts right where um, season one ended. You know, we're still dealing with the um, Jamal case that the, um, what, he's just a... Uh, he was uh, unarmed. He's not a Supreme Court justice. No, no, it's a, in federal court. So basically, oh, okay. yeah, this guy was... Um, an unarmed person who was shot by a police officer, um, unarmed black man shot by a police officer. And it looks like they're kind of doing a federal case, a federal kind of um, racial injustice case. I, 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 you know, we're not lawyers around here. <laughs> no, I was just saying we're picking right back up because yeah. I was like, is he a Supreme? He's not a Supreme Court no, justice that Callie's clerking for. Yeah, he's a and that justice. we're, uh, you know, we're seeing clips of because Mariana basically led the charge of pay equality for the, um, I guess you would call it the tech firm that she works at mm -hmm. um, by posting everyone's salaries. And basically, kind of the backlash from the male workers that would that work there. And much like good, if you're not familiar with Good Trouble, it it jumps around in the episode, which at first in the series, which at first I thought I wasn't gonna like too much, but I don't mind it. So we see like what happened, what it's going to lead up to, and then the things that happen to lead up to the end, you know, the end of the episode. Um, so yeah, and then basically, I'm trying to think where I want to go from there. Let's just go into, um, Mariana, because I think from there it goes into Mariana being in bed with Raj. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> there is a scene where, you know, he's getting up to go to the bathroom because they live in a communal living so the bathroom like the uh, everyone has, has their rooms and then everyone has like the they share the the like bathroom like the shared living areas mm -hmm. living room kitchen and he stands up naked and she's like she makes a face and i already knew what it was gonna be about basically raj character has an uncircumcised penis you know, usually when we see this handled in a lot of shows, I typically do not like the way that they handle it because they always make it out to really shame what an uncircumcised penis looks like. With this, I liked that it, like, she caught herself looking at it and it's like she was self-aware of her expression. And I really liked the exchange that she had with her other friends asking them, like, have you ever seen an uncircumcised penis? So, and I just, you know, they're all in, like, a group text, and I really liked a lot of the responses, like, with the turtle emoji, and just, it, it wasn't done in a shameful way, and I like seeing stuff like that instead of making it out to be gross. Because, I mean, honestly, people don't, most of us get circumcised when we're born. Well, you know, it's not really a choice. Exactly. That and the whole circumcised versus uncircumcised thing it's an american thing you know a lot because i mean i i happen to be a person who's uncircumcised and you know when you see in certain cultures like in latin cultures but even when you just straight up when you go to europe it's not it's nowhere near as common so if you if you're ever with anybody who's like from england or from you know ireland or from germany or it's not usually common for them to be circumcised unless they're jewish um which then is cultural but um this whole thing where in america like 
like large groups of people get circumcised without necessarily any cultural reason for it, i.e. Judaism, um, that's that's a very American thing. So it, it is I, I do agree with you. I like the way that they treated it because so many times I have to hear dumbass jokes about how uh, uncircumcised penises are ugly. It looks like an anteater. <laughs> Um, when the or bitch, an elephant trunk. Yeah, um, <laughs> bitch. When it's hard, you cannot tell the difference. They all look the they, same. I'm, the hood go. <laughs> now, I mean, there are some guys with some excessive foreskin where it it stays put, but mm-hmm. for the most part, most guys when they're uncircumcised, when it gets hard, you're not really going to be able to tell the difference. So, I always think it looks weird when, because I've seen a couple, I've mm-hmm. been with a couple of that. Um, it's like they didn't circumcise enough. And mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, I feel like I'm going to hurt them by pulling the, you know, the foreskin all the way back. Cause it's like, okay, there's it's the really opening tight. is smaller than what needs to come through. Yeah. Yeah. It, so, it, I mean, there's different variations. Mm-hmm. Of I mean, I'm per- I, like. I happen to be a lover of dick in all shapes and sizes. So, I yeah, I don't really care. In the gay culture, we don't give a shit. A lot of people get turned on by the uncut. I mean, there are some things. some of the girls are, are real are, are skittish, but I mean, for the most part, you know, we we all grew up on Little Kim. We used to be scared of the dick, but now we throw lips to the shit. So and handle it, <laughs> okay? And along we move. <laughs> <laughs> so don't be afraid of the dick. Just get it hard and pull that foreskin back. There you go. Or, you know, play with it if he likes it. You know, it's people are into all sorts of things. Yeah, today. you can talk to your partner about what they like. And that was the uh, ultimate. Mind readers. That was the ultimate kind of end. Of, I don't know. Yes, that's that's why I like that they, they really, they it was like the most mature way. It's like, I hope that we can see other shit. That's what I love about, that's what I loved about the Fosters. And what I love about this, because I feel like they tackle, you know, not just like, everyday issues like the things going on politically and you know they tackle everything from race to homophobia a bunch of different things but to handle things in a way that kind of breaks the ice it's very sex positive like instead of asking your friends i don't know what to do with an uncut dick you just literally had sex with this person you you mm-hmm. do what you just did, girl. <laughs> like, or if you got questions about how to treat it, then ask the person who you're with. Um, yeah, because eventually mm-hmm. she ends up like trying to follow the tips that the other girls in the house gave her. But essentially, he was like, Raj was like, "Am I the first uncut guy that you've been with?" <laughs> and you know, they just went from there. Mm-hmm. It, you know, I think it's it's good to see examples of not making a you know a big to do over really nothing yeah don't make it a thing you know and don't ask my neighbors okay come come to me you know another song i only know the tisha campbell to sheena arnold oh, child, from the know. sprung sound <laughs> well you know the song so don't ask my neighbors don't mm-hmm. ask the friends i hang around just come to me if you got something to say, if you want to know then ask me that's it. Yes, we're all grown here. Exactly, exactly. Alrighty, so that's that. Where you want to go next? And then next, uh, you know, we see that Callie still has those papers that ended up, you know, in, in her possession with the officers. Um, I guess like his record within the his police. personnel file. Yeah, personnel file. That's why you're here, because sometimes I can't remember these damn. <laughs> you know, you don't be in no damn corporate America. I'm still in that hole. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I was kind of. Uh, I don't understand why she went to the judge on that, because he was acting real stank with her at the end of that first season. Like he had taken her off the case, and you know, it, and really because she was kind of. She not kind of, but she was catching on to the dirt that he's doing, mm-hmm. you know, cutting deals and uh, making, uh, you know, cutting the deals to help his son who got in trouble with the law and trying to keep all that secret. But in the same, you know, the same turn, he's turning around and um, 
not giving the full justice for a boy who was shot and killed. Right. So I don't understand why she... I don't know. I just wouldn't have taken... I wouldn't have given him the papers. It's either you're going to give them right away (laughs) or not at all. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what her Callie sometimes makes moves that I don't understand. Especially like, because she knows she knows that he's essentially dirty. Well, that and I mean, at this point, Callie, I mean, because this is somebody like we feel like we know because even though she's not a real person, like we watched all of the Fosters. So Mm -hmm. we spent X amount of years with her and with her character growing and developing. And it's like, bitch, you have seen so many fallouts from you just jumping first and doing some shit. Yeah, you know this doesn't end well. (laughs) Like, every time this shit, like, bitch, at this point, like, what the fuck? Like, you don't, she, it's weird to me because she's a frustrating character because it's like, girl, you refuse to think strategically. But Very. so I don't understand half of why that girl moves the way that she does because it's like I know what you're what you're thinking, but bitch, yeah, I would have never let anybody know that. Yeah, I I don't know. So so uh, we're still we're still waiting to see what's gonna go on with that because he said that's what he said to her. He's like, well, I need to think about what your punishment is gonna be for not bringing these papers right away. It, yeah, it, that just it just did not make sense to me. I'm like, okay, hopefully they'll make it make sense, you know, in the next episode or so. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, one of my favorite characters on here is actually Alice. Because I think that she brings a nice relief to the show where some of the characters, you know, sometimes they don't make the best de- decisions. And Alice doesn't make the best decisions decisions all the time either but she has such a what would the word be naivete like that and she's naive she's really she's really naive that it's like i know her that well, that's what i love about this show it's like all these characters it's like if you really think about it you know them you know versions of these characters in your real life well that and i mean the other part of it is it's also good to have a character that makes regular ass bad decisions that don't have such mm-hmm. high stakes. Because <laughs> Callie's decisions yeah, that aren't have... like taking all the dominoes with their yeah, fucked up mistake. <laughs> like you know, some of the decisions the other characters have, where it's bad decisions, it's like okay, bitch, you talking about losing access to your entire career, or you're talking about possibly losing access to your freedom. We'll get there. Um, <laughs> All mm-hmm. of that stuff is like, can a bitch just re- make some regular dumb bitch mistakes? <laughs> <laughs> can I just contemplate on, I need to come out the closet. I need to start dating. I need to get over my ex. I'm Asian. It's not, you know, like she is very, I really love, that's another thing that's really great about the Fosters and Good Trouble is that the, talk about representation. You really get representation of so many different walks of life in these shows. Mm -hmm. And it's very much so, especially you see it, not in just Asian culture, but other culture as well. It's like, okay, well, you know, it's okay that we know like your immediate family, but we don't want everyone else to know. So it's still, there's a lot of shame attached to that. And I like seeing, um, what's her name again? I forgot. Alice, like, not wanting to be in that personal struggle like she sees where it's gonna lead her Mm -hmm. and she'd rather in her own way you know it's like okay i accept me i accept i'm a gay asian woman and i'm really digging daisy you know i want to try and get back with her and show her that i i am ready and i am comfortable with myself yeah, and I like that that's where she's going rather than the previous relationships. Where or she Joey. Was, her name yeah. is Joey. I call the act. The actress's name is Daisy Egan, but the character's name is Joey. Yeah, I like that she went, that she was going for that relationship as opposed to the one where she was basically a doormat. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, her ex was frustrating. I mean, I'm sure we'll still see her in some capacity, but I liked Joey for her. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I like that this couple is not for the male gaze. 
Exactly. Because so many times when you see the the lesbians together, they mm-hmm. are definitely constructed for the male gaze. Like it's the girls. It, you know, I, obviously it's television. We love seeing people who look at... I look a certain way, be with other people who look a certain way. And it's not that these women aren't attractive in their own right. It's just that there is a traditional view where they lo- they only love the lipstick lesbians. They only love the girls who remind you of some sense of heteronormativity, uh, heteronormativity so that, you know, you can feel comfortable with it. Because in as much as people say it's easier for the girls and everybody is okay with the girls being gay... Uh, that's to a point. Everybody's okay with the girls yeah. being gay as long as they're gay for the male gays. Mm-hmm. Like if they're the, they're the they're the lipstick lesbians. Yeah, the two quote unquote hot girls, you know, getting together and and I kissed a girl and I liked it. Everybody, they're cool <laughs> with that shit. Um, but let it be the two girls. Let it be them ho- all some old Home Depot girls, some, old, some indigo old, girls. Okay, some old flannel wearing chicks. What's that thing they use? Lilith. Fair? Lilith Fair, baby. <laughs> let it be that. <laughs> and it's a problem. It's a problem when they're not the type of when they're when they're getting together not to please you know the heterosexual male gaze. So, mm-hmm. um, I definitely love the opportunity to see that type of relationship unfold. On television, that's dope to me. And you know the opposite. Yeah, we still got to You know, I'm not really. Uh, I do not like character love triangles because I know a lot of people love that. I mean, shit, it went on for years with Ross and Rachel and uh, friends. You know, the back and forth. And uh, but you know, with this, they're in good trouble. It's really a love triangle between Callie, Gael, and Jamie. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, both the characters will, uh, the characters of Gael and Jamie, they're good for Callie in very separate ways. And um, I like the development of those characters for that reason. But I don't like be- the thing that Callie does with both of them is she really interchanges and uses them when she needs whoever she needs at the moment. Yeah, they're tools. Yeah, and I I don't think that that's fair to the characters in the point. And I, you know, I've seen previews of what's to come in this season. Um, I I I think there's another guy that comes into what um, Gael's life, and I hope that that's who he because he his character deserves better, and so does Jamie. Because what Callie's doing right now is not cool. Like, sh- and she did the same thing in the past. Like, if you're not familiar with the the Fosters, she did it with Aaron, you know. And then when Aaron moved on, she wanted to come back. And I'm glad that he was like, you know, I'm I'm with somebody else now. So there's a lot of things with Callie. Like, I like her as a character, but it's like, God damn, girl, what is it going to take? Girl, <laughs> because be by yourself and get some you therapy. You keep making the same decisions about, yes. like, you don't learn anything. Girl, I need them to have one of your next few episodes with you just in a ther- with a therapist. Talking yeah, this work shit. your shit out. <laughs> work, get your shit together. <laughs> Jesus, but yeah. And then from there, you know, we're seeing more interaction of Mariana with her, um, with the boss. I think that he has some with Evan. I think he has some sort of. Uh, have they gone over if he's autistic or? They have they not have. really. They haven't really addressed exactly what exactly what it is. I mean, it's obvious that he has some sort of social anxiety or some sort of kind of issue around that, whether it be autism or some Asperger's or something else along mm-hmm. that line. Something where there's definitely a dissonance between him kind of fully interpreting social interactions. And fully like reading the full spectrum of social interactions, so um, they they haven't really named the thing, but th- I mean I, there's obviously something there. And I like that, like what I just said about Callie that kind of frustra- frustrates me with her character is kind of the opposite of Mariana. Mariana used to really find herself in the you know in the Foster series, like her mouth and just she would just get into things 
And it's like, what the hell are you doing? But in good trouble, I think she's really grown, um, especially in this scene where, you know, with Evan, like he keeps, he feels comfortable with her. So he keeps coming to her on a lot of things. I mm-hmm. mean, granted, she's also developed uh, some sort of app that he's interested in. And he is, you know, at the end of season one, she was thinking about leaving the company because she just thought that she was, you know, causing too much trouble and just things were getting messy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's like saying that he likes being able to come talk to her and, you know, have an, an open policy and stuff. And she's like, you should have that with everybody you know because it's putting her in a situation where people are really looking at her like okay is she because this the character of evan has like a history with like kind of taking to other female employees Mm -hmm. i don't think like in a like a harassment way i just think since he's socially awkward he really does not know how to conduct himself so i hope that we get to see more of like mariana kind of like helping him like you know you should do this especially as a business owner well and even that they kind of uh allude to the idea i mean they outright say it basically is it's just speculation like they Mm -hmm. everybody speculated that because he got close to this other girl and she happened to leave oh he must have sexually harassed her oh he must have tried to get with her and that's why she left but it was like no the bitch just got a better offer and she just left Mm -hmm. you know like what you want to do in the tech industry you get like a great offer and you say okay i'm gonna take this bye everybody but yeah, you just keep moving. exactly but they assumed that he was doing on some creep shit and just like they're assuming that he's doing something with mariana and it's it's he's not he's not even come close to making a move on her all he's done he's he's expressed interest in her because she, and i think it's probably because she was one of the few people that have been like unafraid to talk to him yes uh-huh. you know and because of that, and it's probably girls who are more because they have a in the this this company they have a really fucked up and weird work environment. Because mm-hmm. all like the other female employees there were afraid to do anything, mm-hmm. well, <laughs> and they let the assumed, guys just do whatever. Yeah, they assume that the stat. I mean, and in some cases, let's be real. It, it is correct to assume that the status quo is set. And sometimes you don't know that the status quo can be changed until there's somebody who's just willing to come in and change it. And in a lot of cases, that person is changing the status quo isn't necessarily doing it because, oh, I'm going to be the trailblazer. They're just like, well, I just had an idea and I just asked them about it. I I was I not supposed to do that? (laughs) And that I mean, I think that's the great example of her growth in her character is that she she's really self-confident and she knows that she's good. She did go through a period of time in the last season where she was like, like the, you know, maybe this isn't for me. Because the, the guy employees, they know that she's good at what she does. And they're threatened by it. Again, this show takes, you know, from stuff that happens in real life. And this is going on right now with pay inequality and you know, now we're now we're starting to see the tide turn. And I think a lot of guys, especially insecure guys that like the way that the system is set up where, you know, it makes it easier for them. It caters to them. They don't want to see this change where there is more women involved and more women in charge and more women making choices. Mm hmm. Yeah. And then um, lastly, I think I I think we can go over the. um you know, the Jamal case, they finally came to, you know, you kind of saw like a glimmer of hope because the judge decided that the, um, the cops personnel file could be used in the trial. And then it's not too long after that. It's like, okay, it was, you know, just like, like what we see play out in real life. The cop was found not guilty. Yep, and uh, so. I mean, and, there, and that ha- you know, I I like that they didn't necessarily go with some idealized version of oh we told everybody the right thing and then they just made the right decision. No, girl, juries make the wrong decision all the time, especially when they're pre- predominantly white 
and the victim is black because they're usually never seen as a victim even when none of the shit makes sense like it don't make no kind of sense we still see these outcomes over and over again that's why we don't get excited about people being charged like girl get people get charged all the time Mm -hmm. but does the cop get convicted that's what i care about yeah especially when we see all this mounting evidence like we see literal literal video of of the incident happening and it's still it's like okay this this just makes no sense and it's just the scene is it's a really powerful scene where um sandra thompson jamal's mom is up there like you know crying and really having a a raw emotional moment because she's like i'm never gonna be able to you know hear his corny jokes or see him again and basically the things that we've seen play out like when someone is gone and they're they've been killed they're gone and then the cops that murder these young men they get to go on about their lives it's really just a blip to them Mm -hmm. like it's like oh you know it's just a little it's a little speed bump but for the impact that this has on the families it's forever they're never going to get back this person that you took from them but you get to go and live your life and probably and you're going to celebrate tonight because you got off yeah that's there you go so with that you know we see callie coming out and she has her uh badge and she puts it on her bag and she gives malika a hug and you know she starts in the you know the the protest and the chant and then we cut to the um scene that we saw in the beginning where the uh, federal that i think it was the fbi right yeah the fbi agents you know were like do you have your badge on you like they stopped her on her street on her the sidewalk outside of her home and she's looking for it and she's like uh no and then it shows that malika took the badge off of callie's bag and went into you know the office where the justice is or whatever and then you know this the episode was over so we'll see most definitely next week what happens but i'm just like i'm i understand what malika's character was doing because when you're so distraught and the emotions are running high like you're not thinking straight but it's like god damn not only are you gonna get you know into some sort of mess but you're also callie's gonna get brought into it and then it's gonna be a whole thing where the judge finds out that she knew malika why didn't she disclose this information i don't think this i don't know if things are gonna go too good for callie this season i i don't see how they can I, I don't I, I I mean some of it because of her own bad decisions and then some of it like Malika girl I don't know what you're doing with that shit so we'll yes. see like this is not this none of this is a good idea so we'll see but like I said it's good to have you know Alice over here with regular stakes <laughs> versus, yes. versus these girls over here with way larger stakes like girl you breaking federal laws and shit that's not that's not cute <laughs> like, y'all, y'all are doing too much like it's just it could really like your whole life could be ruined exactly exactly and, and who Lincoln, would you, you know how it goes down for black people yeah like who would you help in so uh anything else before to say before we bounce no i think that's it i'm just you know looking forward to what this season has you know up its sleeve to come okay awesome well listen guys remember to like and subscribe and all of that jazz and uh we'll uh we'll go from there thanks and have a great day thanks for listening see ya all right bye